Oh, but my point is that she used to have like probably like long lashes. She used to just look worldly, evil. She was a seductress, you know, she was very seductive, selfish, gold digging. Everything an evil person or evil woman represents, that's what she was. And basically she was like a she devil. And God don't let us women, you know, she she dressed like how girls dress going to the club, you know, with stuff. She would go to, like, if she went to church, she would go to church like that, just to be disrespectful. And she dressed her like a harlot, you know. That's what the Bible calls a harlot, which is a whore. Or, like, a prostitute or, you know, hoe, whatever. She dressed it like a uh, What is it called? Hole tree? Harlotry, harlotry. She dressed, you know, like whorish and stuff. And she just had a whorish attitude, a whorish mindset. Um, she was so evil, knowing the Bible. And God just don't want us women or girls or young women or older women being like that. He don't want the men being having like a feral heart and heart or like, you know, mean, selfish ignorant, arrogant, stuff like that. He don't want them having like a Judas is scared. He don't want us never being like a Pharaoh, Judas is scary, or Jezebel. And um that was the evil people known in the Bible. Or King Saul, he turned evil too. Disobedient. And he don't want us being like ex Lucifer, you know how the enemy was before he became I mean before he became the devil. And he was still God chosen angel and he had rebelled against God. So I'm like, so oh, yeah. But yeah, my point is I don't I I don't wanna wear lashes. God already convicted me of wearing the lashes that make me feel like a Jezebel or, you know, have like a cause some things, um, that you that we wear or habits or whatever that's kind of like distant from God or not in His will and stuff in His way and purpose of your life could try to uh, spirits could try to attach themselves to you through different things that is far from God's will or work or way as in your life and like if I wore lashes that make me look like a Jezebel God don't want us being enticing to men out here when we supposed to be kept women of God, kept holy, you know, set aside for his use from the world. And if I'm wearing something that look like I'm going to entice a man or just look like I'm about to go to the club, you're dressing like I'm about to go to the club or dressing like I'm about to. It's like if you dress like a killer, people would think you a killer. But what do a killer look like today, right? But the original killer look is somebody with a ski mask, a knife, or a gun, or whatever. Then you got the original thief or robber, ski mask, knife, gun, right? Then you got, if you look like a, a thug with a hoodie, ski mask, gun, somebody will thank you. You know, even if you have the look of a robber or a thief or a rapist, of somebody with the hoodie, dark hoodie, dark glasses, you know, whatever. I'm just saying, if you look the part... You know, in this uh, stereotype world, that's why I say in the Bible, men judge by appearance, God just by the heart. People would think what you are for how you dress or present yourself, how you portray yourself. But if you portray yourself in a godly, humble, apparel manner, humble, modest, respectful manner, set aside for God's use of holiness and his righteousness and his humility, temperance, and respectfulness, then you good. You feel what I'm saying? You shouldn't be looking like you going to the club or when you going to church or what. Because cause church to us is not just the building on Sunday or Wednesday or Friday. It's a lifestyle to portray a living under his care and his works and his word of a church full lifestyle. Because we are the church, the body of Christ. And... You know, all God's people is considered God's church, his first and foremost temple, his ultimate temple. So, mind you, the church is just the building, but you being his people, God's bride, Jesus' bride, the Holy Ghost bride, is considered God's church, his 
temple, his building is in you, in your heart, in your mind, your soul, your spirit, and your whole body is his temple, is his church. So you got to adorn yourself with more things like him and less things of materialistic things or modern day things or things that are tricky enemy. So if you do wear modern day things, it has to be in a holy conduct whereas though if you wear say if you like wearing lashes, sometimes we could offend God when we wear certain things like that because if we wear it to entice men, that's offending God. If we wearing it to get a man, that's offending God. If we wear it like weave or certain clothes, certain shoes, certain makeup or accessories to get the wrong attention from somebody that's not of God's will or to do the wrong things and intentions, then that offend God and others that want what's best for you or want what's best for God and stuff like that. So God allow lashes on one person. And then he might convict another person of not wearing it. Or he might like allow jeans on one person. Like one person could get away with wearing tight jeans. But that's the thing. I want you to understand something. When God say he don't want us wearing certain things, it's to protect us and, and each other in the world because from certain dangers and stuff. Like if you're a woman, you single and you married to God, you're not supposed to wear things that you know, pants that look like it's painted on you, blouses showing your cleavage, all that stuff look like it's painted on you. If you have a man in your life that's a good man or you about to be married or you married, you should only wear that stuff behind closed doors with your man because if your man not around while you at work or your man not around, it's just like Muslims. I respect Muslims when they garb up because they protect themselves from enticing men. Well, us women, godly women, supposed to garb up as well. Not looking like a nun or whatever, but we, we could garm up, you know. And I respect the nuns, too, because they don't entice the men either, either. But you don't have to look like a grandma to, to uh, garb up or garb down or whatever. You just look, you just garb up with respect, modesty, humble, godly apparel. You know, looking modest, humble, godly, and Christ-like, you know. I'm up here saying not devil like or horse like, you know. So or Jezebel like, you know. But you don't have to look like a Muslim or a nun, but wearing them long dresses with style is appropriate, you know, appropriately. And then wearing a, a nice blouse that's not showing cleavage. Like you mind you, you know how I dress. You see me wearing nice stuff, but I had to dress it down myself. Because I was still looking like a snack sometimes, and a pro and guys would approach me wrong type guys would approach me when I would wear certain tights, and God forgive me for when my um neighbor was in, enticed by me when I was wearing certain tights I should have just you know took it off then you know but I was like that's his problem lusting after me and he knew he got a woman but. No, when we, we see somebody, when we see we enticing someone else and we don't mean to, we should feel offended too because by them even looking our way if they already have someone. But then we should feel as though, okay, how do Christ or God feel about this? God Almighty, how do God Almighty feel about this? How do Jesus and the Holy Ghost feel about this? Or right, how do my church feel about this? How do my friends feel about this? How do my men feel about this? Okay. How do my kids feel about this? We represent a lot of people. God, ultimately, our kids, secondly, our lover or, you know, spouse or life partner, thirdly. But we represent God and ourselves first and secondly. So we have to know in the church and stuff, we have to know, wait a minute. I don't want to look like this and represent the wrong type of things or attitude or mindset, frame of mind or outlook. Because mind you, this world so judgmental, misjudgmental, because they're not judging right. But they misjudgmental with the parent stereotype, you know. So you want to make sure you make the best representation where you go, who you with, who you around, and which, what and who you represent. 
You got to know who your maker is. You got to know. Um, let me say, hold up. What did she say? You got to know your maker. Your purpose. You know, your maker, your mate, your purpose, and um, let me say, you gotta know your maker, your mate, no, your maker, your purpose, and your mate, something like that. But you just gotta know your intentions and who or what you represent, and you pull the represent God, and then you know yourself, and then you know your family, friends, and loved ones around you, amongst you. So, if you a prostitute, you gonna represent prostitution. If you a a um a thief or a robber, you gonna represent you know robbing, you know stealing and stuff. If you a rapist, you gonna represent being a pervert or a sex offender. If you a child molester, you gonna represent being a pedophile. If you you know, a heroic person, like whether you a pastor or a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor, anything you represent becomes part of your ministry and or part of your conduct. And if you a police officer, you want to be the right type of police officer, not the wrong type of police officer, like the crooked kind. You want to be the right kind. And if you the crooked kind and you represent the crooked kind, then you can't be trusted. And that's what I, that's my whole point and scenario of the fact, and matter of the fact is, whatever you represent, you should be trusted by. But if you know you're representing something not to be trusted, then you are, what you are is you signify and symbolizing that, okay, this is my character to portray. I'm not representing something to be trusted, but it's up to you to trust it. Like, some people represent the devil. They call them Satanist people or um, uh, devil worshipers. I guess they call themselves uh, Luciferians or something. I don't know. But like I said, at the end of the, you know, what we probably realize, I mean, what, what I want you to realize is, Whoever you represent the devil, they call it, I, I don't know if this is such thing of Lucerians, but, you know, because the devil is not Lucifer anymore, but they always try to make it seem like the devil worshiper try to make it seem like he still is, but he really not, he, he's the devil. So you call them devil worshipers or satan, Satanist worshipers, satanic worshipers and stuff like that. But anyway, getting to my point, when they represent the devil, they wear... They strange, they do demonic things, demonic forces, have demonic certain, you know, wicked powers, whatever. But they are accepted in a weird way because they portray what they are. They know who they are. And people are even like if if, if you worship the devil, you accept it, okay, he evil. I want to be this, whatever. But whether people were like whether people accept you or not or want to be around you, they respect the fact, okay, that that they're set aside for that. I'm gonna betray them as that. I'm gonna judge them as that. You are labeled once you accept what you want to represent. And that's just what I'm saying. I don't want to represent being a Jezebel, you know, because um I'm a Christ like woman, so I'm not supposed to fornicate. I'm not supposed to curse i'm not you know swear i'm not supposed to uh use profanity it's certain things like being a christian is just the type of person god wants you to portray and display of, of his image and no matter what religion you are in you're supposed to represent god almighty and his laws and that's what make it different from god's uh practices of his righteousness and holiness and did just a religion a religion is something you do on a daily basis um religiously whether it's good or bad and um whether it's a cult or not but a spiritual relationship with god is different from a religion because a spiritual relationship is is it like a it's like a spiritual intimacy a spiritual connection, a spiritual chemistry that you share with God. 
and you're on like a deeper level one-on-one -on -one through his grace and mercy that you understand him and of course he understands you and y'all understand each other y'all have like a deep connection bond that is unbreakable and that's what me and god got not every Christian can say they got that with God. Not every believer can say they had it with God. Not every religious person practicing religion can say they got that. But when you cross from religion into relationship with God, that's what you get. But getting back to my point, I don't want to portray Jezebel in this because that's not of God. That's separated from God. And... um. I guess you could say Eve was portraying a Jezebel attitude or frame of mind when she listened to the serpent of an guy and her husband. And she enticed her husband to eat the fruit or persuade, whatever you want to say. So that was kind of like acting Jezebelish because seductiveness, seductress, wickedness, manipulation, kind artistness, um, Cunningness, deceiving, all that is in a um, Jezebel category. So, get back to my point and whole scenario. You could wear lashes and probably still feel like, okay. But my thing is, I could wear lashes. But if God convict me, anything God convict you of or convert you into believing that is not right. Or it is right to believe. Like, it just, he convict you. Conviction is like, it's like a disciplining spirit in your conscience. The, the connect with that light bulb in your head that, wait a minute, this ain't right. It's like a light go off in your spirit. Like, wait a minute, this ain't right. I'm not going to do this no more. Or God is telling you and showing you the way. No, this ain't right. I'm not going to do it. So let me just get it together. Because if God says it's wrong, it's wrong. And God convicted me so many times because he was letting me know. I don't want you looking like how these women of the world is that don't know better. You know better. You have my guidance. You have my direction. You're supposed to be a leader to them to show them that you're not like of the modern world is set aside being a kept holy woman of God represent my light and not darkness not worldliness not fleshliness not sinfulness and not to offend and no disrespect but it's a lot of women out here look nice in the apparel of makeup or um lashes but it's what or who they represent why they get misjudged because how you used to be able, you should, you supposed to be able to tell a godly woman from a harlot or a hoe or a prostitute or a mother or a sister or um, a preacher or a minister or a daughter. I mean, I don't know. Like you could be heaven. You could be all these characters in one, but. It's the characters you represent the most. Like, if you are a mother, don't matter to how many children, you're not supposed to look like you are a prostitute. You're not supposed to look like you are a harlot or a whore. And you ain't supposed to act like a whore either. And then if you are a daughter or a sister to someone, you're not supposed to... It's just... It's all these characters of... You know, that people display of upholding that uh, position or character role model of what they represent. And that's the thing. Like I said, if you're a minister, you ain't supposed to look like you some whore dropping it, uh, you know, um, dropping it like it's hot in a club or looking like you're a prostitute in the street. So, I'm not saying a lot of women do look like they are prostitutes with the makeup and lashes and apparel of clothing or whatever, clothes, whatever. But a lot of women look moderately, humbly, godly, whatever. Now, looking a certain way don't make you holy because there's a lot of people that look holy that is very evil and demonic and, and uh, wicked and mean and selfish and all that below. 
So holiness is a conduct more than it is a style or an image or a look. Because you could look holy and not be holy. You could look righteous and not be righteous. But holiness just means set aside for God's use from something of the world that what the world is used to. They want this, you know, makeup, lashes, lipstick, eyeshadow, wigs, weave, certain clothes, paint an image of a beautiful to the world, but it's less beautiful to God because anything that's added on to cover up what God already created becomes less beautiful in God's eyes. If you acknowledge God and say, God, I want to wear this, but I don't want to undo what you already did as beautiful and perfect as you made me your image. I just wanted to beautify myself a little and feel beautiful even more. But if you want me to go natural, I understand that. But I just wanted to. And then you could go to a next level and be like, God, if you don't want me wearing the lashes, you know, fine. I won't wear uh fraud you know uh unnatural things uh far as makeup or um like if you say god i'm not gonna wear lipstick but i like wearing lip gloss or i like wearing lip balm or I like wearing chapstick he'll he'll be okay with that or god i'm not gonna wear makeup but i'm gonna wear a facial mask to get rid of my blemishes or whatever or god i'm not gonna wear makeup but i want to wear eyeshadow or god but then i don't but mind you what is like our salvation relationships with God is different so he know who could wear something and not entice a man or people or get the wrong judgment judged on them and who will you know what I'm saying so who will uh make a guy false image guy out of what they're using to beautify themselves and who won't or who would change and become something they're not meant to be of God's will and who won't, you know, so that's where they all come from, and I got a lot of compliments from you, my niece, you know, a lot of people, my mom was saying I looked nice, but my mom agreed too, that them lashes I had for my birthday made me look worldly, what I mean by that is, I looked at like them girls you see on YouTube, the videos, I looked at like them girls, and it made me portray a certain attitude. I was still trying to be myself, but when you address or or um, attach yourself to certain things that certain people of the world of the world just mean like set aside for like fleshly or the enemy stuff and stuff like that, you know, wicked, fleshly, worldly, sinful stuff. Okay, now I was trying to be myself, but everywhere I went people portrayed me as this certain image that I was trying to outdo their looks or outdo their swag. I was getting them looks like they was intimidated or jealous or envious of my look with the lashes. You know, women or gay men or whatever. Then I was like, okay, why is they looking at me like that? So then sometime wearing these things like what happened to Lucifer before he became the devil, he thought he was the most beautiful thing in in heaven that God made so he thought you know maybe I should try to make this work for myself and take over God's kingdom so God was to heaven and, and um for him and the demons hallelujah and that's how he got in trouble he had too much pride in his heart thinking he was very beautiful which he wasn't all that he really wasn't trusted but he in his mind he thought he was and this is what happens to us we when we wear certain things, we think we're the it, you know. We can oh, like that song. I'm conceited. I got a reason. No, no one has a reason to be conceited, because conceitedness is stuck up proudness, high maintenance, bouginess, and God is not of God. And we ain't supposed to call ourselves a diva either, because diva is like a demonic word force that you are representing. Um something devilish in a devilish realm and it came from buddhist uh evil spirits uh thug and diva i'll send you um in text messages or messages so you can look it up uh so i you know look at the information 
about Gug and Diva, but um yeah, like it was this ancient Buddha demon thing, Gug and Diva meant demonic forces and um demonic representation of sinful acts and behavior uh representing something that's not close to you know being of the creator's will so like i said that's what you know i wanted to say i'm not a diva i'm not i don't want to be a jezebel and certain people could wear certain things and still be holy but if you offending God and God convict you, you got to be obedient and listen and not wear it. Now, some people do need wigs, you know, like myself. Or I don't really need wigs no more. But I do need some type of hairstyle because my hair is nappy or not even nappy. It's just, well, yeah, kind of like bushy-fied if I don't put no braids in it or no put or braid it up to wear a weave or, or, or wig. But... Half of these waves is, is offered up to idol gods. So what you do is you ask God to purify it. Forgive them for offering up to idol gods and offer it up to our God. Like, God, please bless this. I'm so sorry. They ain't no better. Forgive them for they know not what they do, Jesus. Help our weave be blessed as we wear it. Whatever type of weave or accessories we wear. Help us not make gods out of it. Help us not look like Jezebels or harlots. Help us not look like of the world or um, modern age Christians trying to be hypocritical. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And then, you know, I feel good in my spirit just praying that prayer. And hopefully anybody will feel good praying it and knowing that they sincere and supplicational with it. And just being humble, modest, and godly apparel. So I'll get the scriptures for you later, Queep, but... That's why I don't wear the lashes no more because I'ma just start keep growing my my lashes, and I don't know I don't like how the you know the looks I get portrayed in the lashes. Like if I if I get them a certain look, I don't get those looks. But when it's thick or individual, I don't know. Like I don't want to look like of the world and get treated like oh she of the world or oh she like us or oh she uh trying to outdo me or you know all these crazy scenarios and i'm like i just was just trying to look nice but god say don't offend the brethren or your fellow men so if i'm offending them but it's not even about them first it's about god so if i'm offending god and i'm offending them then it's a problem you know sometimes you're going to offend people um in the world looking nice or being nice or being prosperous and plus but God wants you to live peacefully among all your fellow men, all people, or men, God. And, you know, people, place, and things. So what you do is if you offended someone, you tell them, look, I didn't mean to offend you. I hope I'm not offending you. Or you just show them, look, you don't have to be offended. You know, I welcome your, you, you, I welcome you and your blessings and your presence of prosperity as well as mine, you know. So, I don't know. I just hope you understand. But I love you. And just hit me up. And, um, you know, they call me Miss Preacher, Miss Teacher, or, um, Miss Preacher Lady or Miss Preach, because, you know, that's what I do. But I try to practice what I preach. That's the best preacher out here practicing what they preach. All right, God bless. Love you. Bye.